Corfu or Kerkura, Greek, Kerkura translate. Kerkura, Circera, Ancient Greek, Corkura translate. Corkura, Corkura, Latin, Corsaira, Italian, Corfu is a Greek island in the Ionian Sea. It is the second largest of the Ionian islands, and, including its small satellite islands, forms the northwesternmost part of Greece. The island is part of the Corfu Regional Unit, and is administered as a single municipality, which also includes the smaller islands of Erekosa, Mathraki and Othanoi. The municipality has an area of 610, 9 square kilometres, the island proper 592, 8 square kilometres. The principal city of the island and seat of the municipality population is also named Corfu. Corfu is home to the Ionian University. The island is bound up with the history of Greece from the beginnings of Greek mythology. Its history is full of battles and conquests. Ancient Corcyra took part in the Battle of Cybota which was a catalyst for the Peloponnesian War, and, according to Thucydides, the largest naval battle between Greek city-states until that time. Thucydides also reports that Corcyra was one of the three great naval powers of 5th century BC Greece, along with Athens and Corinth. Medieval castles punctuating strategic locations across the island are a legacy of struggles in the Middle Ages against invasions by pirates and the Ottomans. Two of these castles enclose its capital, which is the only city in Greece to be surrounded in such a way. As a result, Corfu's capital has been officially declared a Kastropolis castle city, by the Greek government. From medieval times and into the 17th century, the island, having successfully repulsed the Ottomans during several sieges, was recognized as a bulwark of the European states against the Ottoman Empire and became one of the most fortified places in Europe. The fortifications of the island were used by the Venetians to defend against Ottoman intrusion into the Adriatic. Corfu eventually fell under British rule following the Napoleonic Wars. Corfu was eventually ceded by the British Empire along with the remaining islands of the United States of the Ionian Islands, and unification with modern Greece was concluded in 1864 under the Treaty of London. In 2007, the city's old quarter was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List, following a recommendation by ICOMOS. Corfu is a very popular tourist destination. The island was the location of the 1994 European Union Summit. Topic. Name The Greek name, Kerkura or Korkura, is related to two powerful water deities, Poseidon, god of the sea, and Asopos, an important Greek mainland river. According to myth, Poseidon fell in love with the beautiful nymph Korkura, daughter of Asopos and river nymph Metope, and abducted her. Poseidon brought Corcyra to the hitherto unnamed island and, in marital bliss, offered her name to the place, Corcyra, which gradually evolved to Kirkura Doric. They had a child they called Phyax, after whom the inhabitants of the island were named Phyakis, in Latin Phaeashani. Corfu's nickname is the island of the Phaeacians. The name Corfu, an Italian version of the Byzantine Corifo, Corifo meaning, city of the peaks derives from the Byzantine Greek Corify, Corify crests or peaks, denoting the two peaks of Palaio Topic: Geography The northeastern edge of Corfu lies off the coast of Sarande, Albania, separated by straits varying in width from 3 to 23 kilometers 2 to 14 miles. The southeast side of the island lies off the coast of Thesprotia, Greece. Its shape resembles a sickle drepane, drepani to which it was compared by the ancients. The concave side, with the city and harbour of Corfu in the centre, lies toward the Albanian coast. With the island's area estimated at 592.9 square kilometres 146,500 acres, it runs approximately 64 kilometres 40 miles long, with greatest breadth at around 32 kilometres 20 miles. Two high and well-defined ranges divide the island into three districts, of which the northern is mountainous, the central undulating, and the southern low-lying. The more important of the two ranges, that of Pantocrator, Pantocrator the Almighty, stretches east and west from Cape Falarco to Cape Saromita, and attains its greatest elevation in the summit of the same name. The second range culminates in the mountain of Santi Jeca, or Santa Deca, as it is called by misinterpretation of the Greek designation Agioi Deca, Hagioi Deca, or the Ten Saints. 
The whole island, composed as it is of various limestone formations, presents great diversity of surface, and views from more elevated spots are magnificent. Beaches are found in Agios Gordas, the Carisian Lagoon, Agios Georgios, Marathia, Cassiope, Sidari, Palaiokastritsa and many others. Corfu is located near the Kefalonia Geological Fault Formation, earthquakes have occurred. Corfu's coastline spans 217 kilometers, 135 miles, including capes. Its highest point is Mount Panto Crater, 911 meters, 2989 feet, and the second Straboskiadi at 849 meters, 2785 feet. The full extent of capes and promontories take in Agia Ekaterini, Drastis to the north, Lefkimi and Asprokavos to the southeast, and Megakoro to the south. Two islands are also to be found at a middle point of Guvia and Corfu Bay, which extends across much of the eastern shore of the island, are known as Lazaretto and Taisha or Vito. Camping areas can be found in Palaiokastritsa, Agrilia, with four in the northern part, Pyrgi, Rhoda, Guvia and Mesongi. <laughs> Diapancha Islands The Diapancha Islands Greek, Diapancha Nisia are located in the northwest of Corfu, 6 km away and about 40 km away from Italian coasts. The main islands are Othanoi, Ereikosa and Mathraki. <laughs> <laughs> Lazaretto Island Lazaretto Island, formerly known as Agios Dimitrios, is located two nautical miles northeast of Corfu. The island has an area of 17.5 acres and comes under the administration of the Greek National Tourist Organization. During Venetian rule in the early 16th century, a monastery was built on the islet and a leprosarium established later in the century, after which the island was named. In 1798, during the French occupation, the islet was occupied by the Russo-Turkish fleet, who ran it as a military hospital. During the British occupation, in 1814, the leprosarium was once again opened after renovations, and following a gnosis in 1864 the leprosarium again saw occasional use. During World War II, the Axis occupation of Greece established a Nazi concentration camp there for the prisoners of the Greek resistance movement, while remaining today are the two-storied building that served as the headquarters of the Italian army, a small church, and the wall against which those condemned to death were shot. <laughs> Flora Homer identifies six plants that adorn the garden of Alcinus, wild olive, pear, pomegranate, apple, fig and grapevine. Of these the apple and the pear are very inferior in Corfu, the others thrive, together with all the fruit trees known in southern Europe, with addition of the kumquat, loquat and prickly pear and, in some spots, the banana. Olive trees dominate and their combination with cypress trees compose the typical Corfiat landscape. When undisturbed by cultivation, the high maquis is the major natural vegetation type followed by deciduous oak forests and in less extend pine forests. In total more than 1800 plant species have been recorded. Fauna <inaudible> 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 Corfu is a continental island and so its fauna is similar to that of the opposite mainland. <inaudible> Birds Avifauna is extensive, with around 300 bird species been recorded since the 19th century. Species vary in size from the greater flamingo to the goldcrest. Some species have become extinct, such as the rock partridge, or no longer breed on the island, like the eastern imperial eagle and Bonelli's eagle. Topic. Mammals Around 40 species of mammals live on the island and in the sea around it. Fin whales, sperm whales, Cuvier's beaked whales, common bottlenose dolphins, short-beaked common dolphins, striped dolphins and Rissos dolphins are the regularly present cetaceans. Monk seals appear from time to time without breeding here anymore. Eurasian otters still survive in the lagoons and streams of Corfu. The golden jackal was very common till the 1960s but after persecution it became extinct, with the last individuals observed in the first half of the 1990s. Wild boar were exterminated after 2000 after farmers complained about crop damage. Red foxes, beech martens, least weasels, European hares, northern white-breasted hedgehogs are quite easy to see as some of the smaller mammals as well as the bats. 
Khoipus, fallow deer, Indian crested porcupines, Siberian chipmunks have been observed recently but they are escapees and only the Khoipu has viable population. Amphibians and reptiles Eight species of amphibians and 31 species of reptiles live or have been recorded on and around Corfu, the Greek newt, the Macedonian crested newt, the common toad, the European green toad, the European tree frog, the agile frog, the Epirus water frog and the Greek marsh frog are the representatives of the amphibia class. Loggerhead sea turtles nest on the sandy beaches. On land, the Hermans tortoise is widespread while the marginated tortoise's status is unclear. In freshwater wetlands European pond terrapins and Balkan terrapins are common but the last few years face the competition of the introduced pond slider. Lizard species include typical lizards and geckos like the starred agama, the Mediterranean house gecko, the Moorish gecko, the Dalmatian algyroids, the common wall lizard, the Balkan wall lizard, the Balkan green lizard, the European green lizard and the snake-eyed skink is also the legless Greek slow worm and the European glass lizard. Of the snakes of Corfu only the nose-horned viper is potentially dangerous. The harmless snake list includes the European worm snake, the javelin sand boa, the dolce whip snake, the Balkan whip snake, the Caspian whip snake, the four-line snake, the Esculapian snake, the leopard snake, the grass snake, the dice snake, the European cat snake, the eastern Montpelier snake. In 1985 a yellow-lipped sea snake was photographed in the sea which had probably escaped from captivity. Topic. Climate Corfu has a hot summer Mediterranean climate CSA in the Köppen climate classification. Topic. History Topic. Early history The earliest reference to Corfu is the Mycenaean Greek word ko ro ku ra i jo. Man from Kirkura, written in Linear B syllabic script, c. 1300 BC. According to Strabo, Corsaira Corcura was the Homeric island of Sharia. Sharia and its earliest inhabitants were the Phaeacians. The island has indeed been identified by some scholars with Sharia, the island of the Phaeacians described in Homer's Odyssey, though conclusive and irrefutable evidence for this theory or for Ithaca's location have not been found. Apollonius of Rhodes depicts the island in Argonautica as a place visited by the Argonauts. Jason and Medea were married there in Medea's cave. Apollonius named the island Drepane, Greek for sickle, since it was thought to hide the sickle that Cronus used to castrate his father Uranus, from whose blood the Phaeacians were descended. In an alternative account, Apollonius identifies the buried sickle as a scythe belonging to Demeter, yet the name Drepane probably originated in the sickle shape of the island. According to a scholiast, commenting on the passage in Argonautica, the island was first of all called Macris after the nurse of Dionysus who fled there from Euboea. Others have asserted that Corfu was Taphos, the island of the Lelegian Taphians. According to Strabo, v. 269, the Liburnians were masters of the island Corcora, Corfu, until 735 BC, when they left it, under pressure of Corinthian ruler Hersicrates, in a period of Corinthian expansion to South Italy, Sicily, and Ionian Sea. At a date no doubt previous to the foundation of Syracuse, Corfu was peopled by settlers from Corinth, probably 730 BC, but it appears to have previously received a stream of emigrants from Eritrea. The commercially advantageous location of Corsaira on the way between Greece and Magna Graecia, and its fertile lowlands in the southern section of the island favoured its growth and, influenced perhaps by the presence of non-Corinthian settlers, its people, quite contrary to the usual practice of Corinthian colonies, maintained an independent and even hostile attitude towards the mother city. This opposition came to a head in the early part of the 7th century BC, when their fleets fought the first naval battle recorded in Greek history, 665 BC according to Thucydides. These hostilities ended in the conquest of Corsaira by the Corinthian tyrant Periander Periandros who induced his new subjects to join in the colonization of Apollonia and Anactorium. The island soon regained its independence and thenceforth devoted itself to a purely mercantile policy. During the Persian invasion of 480 BC it manned the second largest Greek fleet 60 ships, but took no active part in the war. 
In 435 BC it was again involved in a quarrel with Corinth over the control of Epidamnus, and sought assistance from Athens see Battle of Cybota. This new alliance was one of the chief immediate causes of the Peloponnesian War, in which Corsaira was of considerable use to the Athenians as a naval station, but did not render much assistance with its fleet. The island was nearly lost to Athens by two attempts of the oligarchic faction to effect a revolution, on each occasion the popular party ultimately won the day and took a most bloody revenge on its opponents 427 BC and 425 BC. During the Sicilian campaigns of Athens Corsaira served as a supply base, after a third abortive rising of the oligarchs in 410 BC it practically withdrew from the war. In 375 BC it again joined the Athenian alliance, two years later it was besieged by a Spartan force, but in spite of the devastation of its flourishing countryside held out successfully until relieved. In the Hellenistic period Corsaira was exposed to attack from several sides. In 303 BC, after a vain siege by Cassander, the island was occupied for a short time by the Lacedaemonian general Cleonymus of Sparta, then regained its independence and later it was attacked and conquered by Agathocles of Syracuse. He offered Corfu as dowry to his daughter Lanassa on her marriage to Pyrrhus, king of Epirus. The island then became a member of the Epirotic alliance. It was then perhaps that the settlement of Cassiope was founded to serve as a base for the king of Epirus expeditions. The island remained in the Epirotic alliance until 255 BC when it became independent after the death of Alexander, last king of Epirus. In 229 BC, following the naval battle of Paxos, it was captured by the Illyrians, but was speedily delivered by a Roman fleet and remained a Roman naval station until at least 189 BC. At this time, it was governed by a prefect presumably nominated by the consuls, but in 148 BC it was attached to the province of Macedonia. In 31 BC, it served Octavian Augustus as a base against Mark Antony. Roman and medieval history Christianity arrived in Corfu early, two disciples of St. Paul, Jason of Tarsus and Sosipatris of Patras, taught the Gospel, and according to tradition the city of Corfu and much of the island converted to Christianity. Their relics were housed in the old cathedral at the site of the current old fortress, before a dedicated church was built for them c. 100 AD during late antiquity late Roman, early Byzantine period, the island formed part of the province of Epirus Vetus in the Praetorian prefecture of Illyricum. In 551, during the Gothic War, the Ostrogoths raided the island and destroyed the city of Corfu, then known as Chersupolis, Chersupolis city on the promontory, because of its location between Gorica Bay and Canoni. Over the next centuries, the main settlement was moved north, to the location of the current Old Fortress, where the rocky hills offered natural protection against raids. From the twin peaks of the new site, the medieval city received its new name, Corifo, Corifo city on the peak, or Corfoy, Corfo peaks, whence the modern western name of Corfu. The previous site of the city, now known as Polyopolis, Polyopolis old city. Continued to be inhabited for several centuries, however, from at least the early 9th century, Corfu and the other Ionian islands formed part of the theme of Cephalania. This naval theme provided a defensive bulwark for Byzantium against western threats, but also played a major role in securing the sea lanes to the Byzantine possessions in southern Italy. Indeed, traveller reports from throughout the Middle Byzantine period 8th -12th centuries make clear that Corfu was an important staging post for travels between east and west. Indeed, the medieval name of Corfu first appears Latinized Corifus in Lutprint of Cremona's account of his 968 embassy to the Byzantine court. Corfu enjoyed relative peace and safety during the Macedonian dynasty 867-1054, which allowed the construction of a monumental church to Saints Iason and Sosipatris outside the city wall of Polyopolis. Nevertheless, in 933, the city, led by its archbishop, Arsenios, withstood a Saracen attack. Arsenios was canonized and became the city's patron saint. The peace and prosperity of the Macedonian era ended with another Saracen attack in 1033, but more importantly with the emergence of a new threat. Following the Norman conquest of southern Italy, the ambitious Norman monarchs set their sights on expansion in the east. Three times on the space of a century Corfu was the first target and served as a staging area for the Norman invasions of Byzantium. 
The first Norman occupation from 1081 to 1084 was ended only after the Byzantine emperor Alexios I Komnenos secured the aid of the Republic of Venice, in exchange to wide-ranging commercial concessions to Venetian merchants. The Admiral George of Antioch captured Corfu again in 1147, and it took a ten-month siege for Manuel I Komnenos to recover the island in 1149. In the third invasion in 1185, the island was again captured by William II of Sicily, but was soon regained by Isaac II Angelos. During the breakup of the Byzantine Empire, the island was occupied by Genoese privateers, 1197-1207, who in turn were expelled by the Venetians. In 1214, it passed to the Greek despots of Epirus, who gave it to Manfred of Sicily as a dowry in 1259. At his death in 1267 it passed with his other possessions to the House of Anjou. Under the latter, the island suffered considerably from the inroads of various adventurers. The island was one of the first places in Europe in which Romani people, gypsies, settled. In about 1360, a fiefdom, called the Feudum Asinganorum was established, with mainly Romani serfs. From 1386, Corfu was controlled by the Republic of Venice, which in 1401 acquired formal sovereignty and retained it until the French occupation of 1797. <inaudible> <inaudible> Venetian rule From medieval times and into the 17th century, the island was recognized as a bulwark of the European states against the Ottoman Empire and became one of the most fortified places in Europe. The fortifications of the island were used by the Venetians to defend against Ottoman intrusion into the Adriatic. Corfu repulsed several Ottoman sieges, before passing under British rule following the Napoleonic Wars, Kirkura, the door of Venice. During the centuries when the whole Adriatic was the Gulf of Venice, remained in Venetian hands from 1401 until 1797, though several times assailed by Ottoman naval and land forces and subjected to four notable sieges in 1537, 1571, 1573 and 1716, in which the strength of the city defences asserted itself time after time. The effectiveness of the powerful Venetian fortifications as well as the strength of some old Byzantine castles in Angelo Castro, Cassiope Castle, Gardiki and elsewhere, were additional factors that enabled Corfu to remain free. Will Durant claimed that Corfu owed to the Republic of Venice the fact that it was one of the few parts of Greece never conquered by the Ottomans. A series of attempts by the Ottomans to take the island began in 1431 when Ottoman troops under Ali Bey landed on the island. The Ottomans tried to take the city castle and raided the surrounding area, but were repulsed. The Siege of Corfu 1537 was the first great siege by the Ottomans. It began on 29 August 1537, with 25,000 soldiers from the Ottoman fleet landing and pillaging the island and taking 20,000 hostages as slaves. Despite the destruction wrought on the countryside, the city castle held out in spite of repeated attempts over 12 days to take it, and the Turks left the island unsuccessfully because of poor logistics and an epidemic that decimated their ranks. Thirty-four years later, in August 1571, Ottoman forces returned for yet another attempt to conquer the island. Having seized Parga and Mortos from the Greek mainland side, they attacked the Paxi Islands. Subsequently they landed on Corfu's southeast shore and established a large beachhead all the way from the southern tip of the island at Lefkimi to Ipsos in Corfu's eastern midsection. These areas were thoroughly pillaged as in past encounters. Nevertheless the city castle stood firm again, a testament to Corfiat Venetian steadfastness as well as the Venetian castle building engineering skills. Another castle, Angelo Castro, situated on the northwest coast near Palaiokastritsa Greek, Palaiokastritsa meaning Old Castle Place and located on particularly steep and rocky terrain, also held out. The castle is a tourist attraction today. These defeats in the east and the west of the island proved decisive, and the Ottomans abandoned their siege and departed. Two years later they repeated their attempt. Coming from Africa after a victorious campaign, they landed in Corfu and wreaked havoc on rural areas. Following a counterattack by the Venetian Corfiat forces, the Ottoman troops were forced to leave the city sailing away. The Second Great Siege of Corfu took place in 1716, during the last Ottoman-Venetian War 1714 After the conquest of the Peloponnese in 1715, the Ottoman fleet appeared in Buthrotum opposite Corfu. On 8 July the Ottoman fleet, carrying 33,000 men, sailed to Corfu from Buthrotum and established a beachhead at Ipsos. 
The same day, the Venetian fleet encountered the Ottoman fleet off the Corfu Channel and defeated it in the ensuing naval battle. On 19 July, after taking a few outlying forts, the Ottoman army reached the hills around the city of Corfu and laid siege to it. Despite repeated assaults and heavy fighting, the Ottomans were unable to breach the defences and were forced to raise the siege after 22 days. The 5,000 Venetians and foreign mercenaries, together with 3,000 Corfiotes, under the leadership of Count von der Schulenberg who commanded the defence of the island, were victorious once more. The success was owed in no small part to the extensive fortifications, where Venetian castle engineering had proven itself once again against considerable odds. The repulse of the Ottomans was widely celebrated in Europe, Corfu being seen as a bastion of Western civilization against the Ottoman tide. Today, however, this role is often relatively unknown or ignored, but was celebrated in Judith Triumphans by the Venetian composer Antonio Vivaldi. Venetian policies and legacy Corfu's urban architecture differs from that of other major Greek cities, because of Corfu's unique history. From 1386 to 1797, Corfu was ruled by Venetian nobility. Much of the city reflects this era when the island belonged to the Republic of Venice, with multi storied buildings on narrow lanes. The old town of Corfu has clear Venetian influence and is amongst the World Heritage Sites in Greece. It was in the Venetian period that the city saw the erection of the first opera house Nobile Teatro di San Giacomo di Corfu in Greece, but it was badly damaged during World War II by German artillery. Many Venetian-speaking families settled in Corfu during these centuries, they were called Corfiat Italians, and until the second half of the 20th century the Veneto da Mar was spoken in Corfu. During this time, the local Greek language assimilated a large number of Italian and Venetian words, many of which are still common today. The internationally renowned Venetian-born British photographer Felice Beato (1832–1909) is thought to have spent much of his childhood in Corfu. Also, many Italian Jews took refuge in Corfu during the Venetian centuries and spoke their own language, Atakian, a mixture of Hebrew-Italian in a Venetian or Apulian dialect with some Greek words. Venetians promoted the Catholic Church during their four centuries of rule in Corfu. Today the majority of Corfiates are Greek Orthodox, but the small Catholic minority 5%, living harmoniously with the Orthodox community, owes its faith to these origins. These contemporary Catholics are mostly families who came from Malta, but also from Italy, and today the Catholic community numbers about 4,000 two-thirds of Maltese descent, who live almost exclusively in the Venetian citadel of Corfu City. Like other native Greek Catholics, they celebrate Easter using the same calendar as the Greek Orthodox Church. The Cathedral of St. James and St. Christopher in Corfu City is the see of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Corfu, Zakynthos and Cephalonia. The island served also as a refuge for Greek scholars, and in 1732, it became the home of the first Academy of Modern Greece. A Corfu cleric and scholar, Nikephoros Theotokos (1732–1800), became renowned in Greece as an educator, and in Russia, where he moved later in his life, as an Orthodox archbishop. The island's culture absorbed Venetian influence in a variety of ways, like other Ionian islands. See cuisine of the Ionian islands. Its local cuisine took in such elements, and today's Corfiat cooking includes Venetian delicacies and recipes, pastizzata, deriving from the Venetian. Pastisada, Italian, Spezzatino, and the most popular dish in the island of Corfu, Sofrito, Strapizzata, Savoro, Bianco, and Mandolato. 19th century By the 1797 Treaty of Campo Formio, Corfu was ceded to the French, who occupied it for two years as the Department of Corsire, until they were expelled by a joint Russian-Ottoman squadron under Admiral Yushikov. For a short time it became the capital of a self-governing federation of the Heptanesos, seven islands. Under Ottoman suzerainty, in 1807 after the Treaty of Tilsit its faction-ridden government was again replaced by a French administration under Governor François Xavier Donzello, and in 1809 it was besieged in vain by a British fleet, which had taken all the other Ionian islands. The Ionian islands became a protectorate of the United Kingdom by the Treaty of Paris of 5 November 1815 as the United States of the Ionian Islands. 
Corfu became the seat of the British Lord High Commissioner of the Ionian Islands. The period of British rule is sometimes considered a prosperous period for Corfu when we consider new roads, an improved water supply system, and the building of the first Greek university to be a sign of prosperity. During this period the Greek language became official. Following a plebiscite the Second National Assembly of the Greeks at Athens elected a new king, Prince Wilhelm William of Denmark, who took the name George I and brought with him the Ionian Islands as a coronation gift from Britain. On 29 March 1864, the United Kingdom, Greece, France and Russia signed the Treaty of London, pledging the transfer of sovereignty to Greece upon ratification. Thus, on 21 May, by proclamation of the Lord High Commissioner, the Ionian Islands were united with Greece. <laughs> British Lord High Commissioners during the Protectorate This is a list of the British High Commissioners of the Ionian Islands, as well as the transitional Greek governor, appointed a year prior to Enosis Union with Greece in 1864. Sir James Campbell 1814-1816 Sir Thomas Maitland 1759-1824 1815-1823 Sir Frederick Adam 1781-1853 1823-1832 Sir Alexander Woodford, 1782 to 1870, 1832. George Nugent Grenville, second Baron Nugent, 1788 to 1850, 1832 to 1835. Howard Douglas, 1776 to 1861, 1835 to 1840. James Alexander Stuart Mackenzie, 1784 to 1843, 1842 to 1843. John Colborn, first Baron Seaton, 1778 to 1863, 1843 to 1849. Sir Henry George Ward, 1797 to 1860, 1849 to 1855. Sir John Young, 1807 to 1876, 1855 to 1859. William Ewart Gladstone, 1809 to 1898, 1859. Sir Henry Knight Storks, 1811 to 1874, 1859 to 1863. Count Dimitrios Nikolaou Carusos, President of Parliament, 1799 to 1873, 1863 to 1864. Topic: First World War. During the First World War, the island served as a refuge for the Serbian army that retreated there on Allied forces ships from a homeland occupied by the Austrians, Germans and Bulgarians. During their stay, a large portion of Serbian soldiers died from exhaustion, food shortage, and various diseases. Most of their remains were buried at sea near the island of Vito, a small island at the mouth of Corfu port, and a monument of thanks to the Greek nation has been erected at Vito by the grateful Serbs. Consequently, the waters around Vito Island are known by the Serbian people as the Blue Tomb in Serbian, Plava Grobnica Plava Grobnica, after a poem written by Militan Bojic following World War I. Topic. Interwar period In 1923, after a diplomatic dispute between Italy and Greece, Italian forces bombarded and occupied Corfu. The League of Nations settled this Corfu incident. Topic: <laughs> Second World War and resistance. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Italian occupation. During the Greco-Italian War, Corfu was occupied by the Italians in April 1941. They administered Corfu and the Ionian Islands as a separate entity from Greece until September 1943, following Benito Mussolini's orders of fulfilling Italian irredentism and making Corfu part of the Kingdom of Italy. During the Second World War the 10th Infantry Regiment of the Greek Army, composed mainly of Corfiat soldiers, was assigned the task of defending Corfu. The regiment took part in Operation Latzides, which was a heroic but ultimately unsuccessful attempt to stem the forces of the Italians. After Greece's surrender to the Axis, the island came under Italian control and occupation. 
On the first Sunday of November 1941, high school students from all over Corfu took part in student protests against the occupying Italian army. These student protests of the island were among the first acts of overt popular resistance in occupied Greece and a rare phenomenon even by wartime European standards. Subsequently, a considerable number of Corfiates escaped to Epirus in mainland Greece and enlisted as partisans in ELAS and EADS, in order to join the resistance movement gathering in the mainland. Topic. German occupation Upon the fall of Italian fascism in 1943, the Nazis moved to take control of the island. On 14 September 1943, Corfu was bombarded by the Luftwaffe. These bombing raids destroyed churches, homes, whole city blocks, especially in the Jewish quarter Evriki, and a number of important buildings, such as the Ionian Parliament, the Municipal Theatre, the Municipal Library and others. The Italians capitulated, and the island came under German occupation. Corfu's mayor at the time, Kallas, was a known collaborator and various anti-Semitic laws were passed by the Nazis that now formed the occupation government of the island. In early June 1944, while the Allies bombed Corfu as a diversion from the Normandy landings, the Gestapo rounded up the Jews of the city, temporarily incarcerated them at the old fort, Palio Froyurio, and on 10 June sent them to Auschwitz, where very few survived. Approximately 200 out of a total population of 1,900 escaped. Many among the local population at the time provided shelter and refuge to those 200 Jews that managed to escape the Nazis. A section of the old city is called Evriki, Ebreik meaning Jewish quarter, where there is currently a synagogue with about 65 members, who still speak their original Atakian language. Topic. Liberation. Corfu was liberated by British troops, specifically the 40th Royal Marine Commando, which landed in Corfu on 14 October 1944, as the Germans were evacuating Greece. The Royal Navy swept the Corfu Channel for mines in 1944 and 1945, and found it to be free of mines. A large minefield was laid there shortly afterwards by the newly communist Albania and gave rise to the Corfu Channel incident. This incident led to the Corfu Channel case, where the United Kingdom opened a case against the People's Republic of Albania at the International Court of Justice. Post-World War and modern Corfu After World War II and the Greek Civil War, the island was rebuilt under the general program of reconstruction of the Greek government and many elements of its classical architecture remain. Its economy grew but a portion of its inhabitants left the island for other parts of the country. Buildings erected during Italian occupation, such as schools or government buildings, were put back to civic use. In 1956 Maria di Silla Capodistria, relative of first governor head of, state of Greece Ioannis Capodistrias, was elected mayor of Corfu and became the first female mayor in Greece. The Corfu General Hospital was also constructed, electricity was introduced to the villages in the 1950s, the radio substation of Hellenic Radio in Corfu was inaugurated in March 1957, and television was introduced in the 1960s, with internet connections in 1995. The Ionian University was established in 1984. <laughs> Urban landscape Topic. Old Town The city of Corfu stands on the broad part of a peninsula, whose termination in the Venetian citadel Greek, Palaioferio is cut off from it by an artificial fosse formed in a natural gully, with a seawater moat at the bottom, that now serves as a marina and is called the Contrafasa. The old town, having grown within fortifications, where every meter of ground was precious, is a labyrinth of narrow streets paved with cobblestones, sometimes tortuous but colorful and clean. These streets are known as Cantunia Greek, Cantunia and the older amongst them sometimes follow the gentle irregularities of the ground, while many are too narrow for vehicular traffic. A promenade rises by the seashore towards the Bay of Gorica, Gorica together with an esplanade between the city and the citadel known as Spionata with the Liston Arcade Greek, Liston to its west side, where restaurants and bistros abound. Palaio Froyurio 
The Old Citadel in Greek Palaiophrourio, Palaiophrourio is an old Venetian fortress built on an artificial islet with fortifications surrounding its entire perimeter, although some sections, particularly on the east side, are slowly being eroded and falling into the sea. Nonetheless, the interior has been restored and is in use for cultural events, such as concerts similes and sound and light productions, echoes Kai Foss when historical events are recreated using sound and light special effects. These events take place amidst the ancient fortifications, with the Ionian Sea in the background. The central high point of the citadel rises like a giant natural obelisk complete with a military observation post at the top, with a giant cross at its apex, at the foot of the observatory lies street. George's Church, in a classical style punctuated by six Doric columns, as opposed to the Byzantine architectural style of the greater part of Greek Orthodox churches. neo -Froyurio. The new citadel or neo, -Froyurio, neo -Froyurio, new fortress, is a huge complex of fortifications dominating the northeastern part of the city. The huge walls of the fortress loom over the landscape as one travels from Neolimani, Neolimani new port, to the city, taking the road that passes through the fish market. The new citadel was until recently a restricted area due to the presence of a naval garrison, but old restrictions have been lifted and it is now open to the public, with tours possible through the maze of medieval corridors and fortifications. The winged lion of St. Mark, the symbol of Venice, can be seen at regular intervals adorning the fortifications. Año and Cato Plataea and the Music Pavilion Near the old Venetian citadel a large square called Spionata is also to be found, divided by a street in two parts, Agno Plataea, literally, Upper Square, and Cato Plataea, literally, Lower Square, Agno Plataea and Cato Plataea in Greek. This is the biggest square in southeastern Europe and one of the largest in Europe, and replete with green spaces and interesting structures, such as a Roman-style rotunda from the era of British administration, known as the Maitland Monument, built to commemorate Sir Thomas Maitland. An ornate music pavilion is also present, where the local Philharmonics, Philharmonic orchestras, Philharmonicas mount classical performances in the artistic and musical tradition for which the island is well known. Cato Plataea also serves as a venue where cricket matches are held from time to time. In Greece, cricket is unique to Corfu, as it was once a British protectorate. Palaia Anactora and its gardens Just to the north of Cato Plataea lie the Palaia Anactora. Palaia Anactora literally, old palaces. A large complex of buildings of Roman architectural style which formerly housed the kings of Greece, and prior to that the British governors of the island. It was then called the Palace of Saints Michael and George. The Order of Saint Michael and Saint George was founded here in 1818 with motto Auspicium Melioris Aevi, and is still awarded by the United Kingdom. Today the palace is open to the public and forms a complex of halls and buildings housing art exhibits, including a museum of Asian art, unique across southern Europe in its scope and in the richness of its Chinese and Asian exhibits. The gardens of the palaces, complete with old Venetian stone aquariums, exotic trees and flowers, overlook the bay through old Venetian fortifications and turrets, and the local sea baths Alaku are at the foot of the fortifications surrounding the gardens. A café on the grounds includes its own art gallery, with exhibitions of both local and international artists, known locally as the Art Café. From the same spot, the viewer can observe ships passing through the narrow channel of the historic Vito Island Nessi Bidu to the north, on their way to Corfu Harbour, Neo Limani with high-speed retractable aerofoil ferries from Igamenitsa also cutting across the panorama. A wrought iron aerial staircase, closed to visitors, descends to the sea from the gardens. The Greek royal family used it as a shortcut to the baths. Rewriting history, locals now refer to the old royal gardens as the Garden of the People. Omicron Kepos II Lao. Topic: The Old Town and Pontaconi Sea. The Old Town of Corfu City is an UNESCO World Heritage Site. In several parts of the old city, buildings of the Venetian era are to be found. 
The old city's architectural character is strongly influenced by the Venetian style, coming as it did under Venetian rule for a long period. Its small and ancient side streets, and the old building's trademark arches are particularly reminiscent of Venice. Of the 37 Greek churches, the most important are the city's cathedral, the church dedicated to Our Lady of the Cave Saint Spyridon Church, wherein lies the preserved body of the patron saint of the island, and finally the suburban church of Saint Jason and Saint Sosipater, Agioi Iason Kai Sosipatros reputedly the oldest in the island, and named after the two saints probably the first to preach Christianity to the Corfiates. The nearby island, known as Pontaconisi Greek meaning Mouse Island, though small is very green with abundant trees, and at its highest natural elevation excluding its trees or man-made structures, such as the monastery, stands at about 2 meters 6 feet 6 in. Pontaconisi is home of the monastery of Pantocrator, Monastery II Pantocratoros The white stone staircase of the monastery, viewed from afar, gives the impression of a mouse tail, which lent the island its name. Topic. Archaeology and architecture Topic. An architectural overview, from classical to modern Corfu contains a few very important remains of antiquity. The site of the ancient city of Corsaira is well ascertained, about 1.5 miles 2 kilometers to the southeast of Corfu, upon the narrow piece of ground between the sea lake of Halikiopolo and the Bay of Castrades, in each of which it had a port. The circular tomb of Menocrates, with its well-known inscription, is on the Bay of Castrades. Under the Hill of Ascension are the remains of a temple, popularly called of Poseidon, a very simple dome structure, which still in its mutilated state presents some peculiarities of architecture. In regard of Cassiope, the only other city of ancient importance, its name is still preserved by the village of Cassiope, and there are some rude remains of building on the site, but the temple of Zeus Cassius for which it was celebrated has totally disappeared. Throughout the island numerous monasteries and other buildings of Venetian erection are to be found, of which the best known are Paleocasritsa, San Salvador and Pelica. The Achillean is a palace commissioned by Elizabeth of Austria and purchased in 1907 by Wilhelm II of Germany. It is now a popular tourist attraction. <laughs> Italianate architecture Corfu city is famous for its Italianate architecture, most notably the Liston, an arched colonnade lined with cafés on the edge of the Spionata Esplanade, the vast main plaza and park which incorporates a cricket field and several pavilions. Also notable are the Venetian Roman-style city hall, the old and new castles, the recently restored Palace of Estes. Michael and George, formerly the residence of the British governor and the seat of the Ionian Senate, and the summer palace of Mon Repos, formerly the property of the Greek royal family and birthplace of the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. The park of Mon Repos is adjacent to the Polyopolis of Kerkera, where excavations were conducted by the Greek Archaeological Service in collaboration with the University of louvain la neuve in Belgium, and Brown University in the United States. Examples of the finds can be found in the Museum of the Palace of Mon Repos. Topic: <inaudible> Destruction of architecture during World War II. During World War II, the island was bombed by the Luftwaffe, resulting in the destruction of most of the city's buildings, including its market Agora and Hotel Bella Venezia. The worst architectural losses of the Luftwaffe bombardment were the splendid buildings of the Ionian Academy, Ionios Academia and the Municipal Theatre which in 1901 had replaced the Nobile Teatro di San Giacomo. The Roman-style theatre of the city was later replaced by a bland, modern box-style building. Discussions have been held at local governmental level about demolishing this modern building and replacing it with a replica of the old theatre. In contrast, the Ionian University reconstructed the Ionian Academy in its former style. Topic: The Achillean. In 1889, Empress Elizabeth of Austria built a summer palace in the region of Gastori, Gastori to the south of the city, naming it Achillean, Achillean after the Homeric hero Achilles. The structure is filled with paintings and statues of Achilles, both in the main hall and in the gardens, depicting scenes of the Trojan War. 
The palace, with the neoclassical Greek statues that surround it, is a monument to Platonic Romanticism as well as escapism. It served as a refuge for the grieving empress following the tragic death of her only son and crown prince, Rudolf. The imperial gardens on the hill look over the surrounding green hills and valleys and the Ionian Sea. The centerpiece of the gardens is a marble statue on a high pedestal, of the mortally wounded Achilles Greek, Achilles the Scon, Achilles the Scon, Achilles dying without hubris and wearing only a simple cloth and an ancient Greek hoplite helmet. This statue was carved by German sculptor Ernst Gustav Herder. The hero is presented devoid of rank or status, and seems notably human, though heroic, as he is forever trying to pull Paris's arrow from his heel. His classically depicted face is full of pain. He gazes skyward, as if to seek help from Olympus. According to Greek mythology, his mother Thetis was a goddess. In 1898, Empress Sissi was assassinated at the age of 60 by an Italian anarchist, Luigi Luceni, in Geneva, Switzerland. After her death, the palace was sold to the German Kaiser Wilhelm II. In contrast, at the great staircase in the main hall is a giant painting of the triumphant Achilles full of pride. Dressed in full royal military regalia and erect on his racing chariot, he pulls the lifeless body of Hector of Troy in front of the stunned crowd watching helplessly from inside the walls of the Trojan citadel. Following the Kaiser's purchase of the Achillean, he invited archaeologist Reinhard Kakuli von Stratonitz, a friend and advisor, to come to Corfu to advise him where to position the huge statue of Achilles which he commissioned. The famous salute to Achilles from the Kaiser, which had been inscribed at the statue's base, was also created by Kakuli. The inscription read, To the greatest Greek from the greatest German. The inscription was subsequently removed after World War II. The Achillean was eventually acquired by the Greek state and has now been converted into a museum. Topic: <laughs> Kaiser's Bridge. German Kaiser Wilhelm II was also fond of taking holidays in Corfu. Having purchased the Achillean in 1907 after Sissi's death, he appointed Karl Ludwig Sprenger as the botanical architect of the palace, and also built a bridge later named by the locals after him the Kaiser's Bridge. Greek, Eta Zephyra II Kaiser transliterated as I Gephyra Tou Kaiser to access the beach without traversing the road forming the island's main artery to the south. The bridge, arching over the road, spanned the distance between the lower gardens of Achillean and the nearby beach. Its remains, a monument to imperial vanity, are an important landmark on the highway. The bridge's central section was demolished by the Wehrmacht in 1944, during the German occupation of World War II, to allow for the passage of an enormous cannon, forming part of the Nazi defenses in the southeastern coast of Corfu. Topic: <laughs> Municipality. <laughs> The present municipality of Corfu was formed in the 2011 local government reform by the merger of the following 15 former municipalities, which became municipal units. Topic. Province The province of Corfu Greek, Eparchia Kerkeras was one of the provinces of the Corfu prefecture. Its territory corresponded with that of the current municipality Corfu. It was abolished in 2006. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Education. Aside from being a leading center for the fine arts, Corfu is also the home of the Ionian Academy, an institution carrying through and strengthening the tradition of Greek education while the rest of Greece was still under Ottoman rule. It is also home to the Ionian University, established in 1984, in recognition, by the administration of Andreas Papandreou, of Corfu's contribution to education in Greece, as the seat of the first Greek university in modern times, the Ionian Academy. The Academy was founded in 1824, 40 years before the cession of the Ionian Islands to Greece, and just three years after Greece's revolution of 1821. Student activism In the modern era, beginning with its massive student protests during World War II against fascist occupation, and continuing in the fight against the dictatorship of Georgios Papadopoulos (1967–1974), students in Corfu have played a vanguard role in protesting for freedom and democracy in Greece, against both internal and external oppression. 
For Corfiotes a recent example of such heroism is that of geology student Costas Georgiakis, who set himself ablaze in Genoa, Italy on 19 September 1970, in a protest against the Greek military junta of 1967–1974. Culture Topic. Museums and libraries Kirkura has always been a cultural centre of distinction and cosmopolitanism. Its museums and libraries are studded with irreplaceable books and artefacts. The most notable of its museums and libraries are located in the city, and are the Archaeological Museum, inaugurated in 1967, was constructed to house the exhibit of the huge Gorgon pediment of the Artemis Temple in the ancient city of Corcora, excavated at Polyopolis in the early 20th century. The pediment has been described by the New York Times as the "...finest example of archaic temple sculpture extant." Kaiser Wilhelm II had developed a "...lifelong obsession." With the Gorgon sculpture, dating from seminars on Greek archaeology the Kaiser attended while at the University of Bonn. The seminars were given by archaeologist Reinhard Kakuli von Stratonitz, who later became the Kaiser's advisor. In 1994, two more halls were added to the museum, where new discoveries from the excavations of the ancient city and the Goritza Cemetery are exhibited. The Museum of Asian Art of Corfu is located at the Palace of St. Michael and St. George mainly Chinese and Japanese arts. Its unique collection is housed in 15 rooms, taking in over 12,000 artifacts, including a Greco-Buddhist art collection that shows the influence of Alexander the Great on Buddhist culture as far as Pakistan see Greco -Buddhism. The Banknote Museum, located in Agios Spiridon Square, features a complete collection of Greek banknotes from independence to the adoption of the euro in 2002. The Byzantine Museum of Antivonotisa, a church converted into a museum featuring rare Byzantine art. Kapodistria's Museum. Ioannis Kapodistria's summer home in Kokuriza in his birthplace of Corfu has been converted to a museum commemorating his life and accomplishments and has been named in his honor. Donated by Maria di Silla Kapodistria, grand niece of Ioannis Kapodistria's, former mayor of Corfu and first female mayor of Greece. The Music Museum of the Philharmonic Society of Corfu is located in the building of the Philharmonic Society and features scores, instruments, paintings and documents related to the music history of Corfu and the 19th century Ionian Islands. The Public Library of Corfu is located at the Old English Barracks, in Palaio Froyurio. The Reading Society of Corfu has an extensive library of old Corfu manuscripts and rare books. The Serbian Museum of Corfu Serbian, Serbska Kuka Serbian House houses rare exhibits about the Serbian soldiers' tragic fate during the First World War. The remnants of the Serbian army of about 150,000 soldiers together with their government in exile, found refuge and shelter in Corfu, following the collapse of the Serbian front as a result of the Austro-Hungarian attack of 6 October 1915. Exhibits include photographs from the three years' stay of the Serbians in Corfu, together with other exhibits such as uniforms, arms and ammunition of the Serbian army, Serbian regimental flags, religious artifacts, surgical tools and other decorations of the Kingdom of Serbia. Salomos Museum and the Corfiat Studies Society <laughs> Patron Saint Spyridon Saint Spyridon the Thaumaturgist miracle worker, Thaumaturgos is the patron saint Palauchos of the city and the island. Saint Spyridon is revered for the miracle of expelling the plague Pinole from the island, among many other miracles attributed to him. It is believed by the faithful that on its way from the island the plague scratched one of the fortification stones of the old citadel to indicate its fury at being expelled. To Saint Spyridon is also attributed the role of saving the island at the Second Great Siege of Corfu in 1716. The legend says that the sight of Saint Spyridon approaching Ottoman forces bearing a flaming torch in one hand and a cross in the other caused panic. The legend also states that the saint caused a tempest which was partly responsible for repulsing the Ottomans. This victory over the Ottomans, therefore, was attributed not only to the leadership of Count Schulenberg who commanded the stubborn defense of the island against Ottoman forces, but also to the miraculous intervention of Saint Spyridon. Venice honored von der Schulenberg and the Corfiats for successfully defending the island. 
Recognizing St. Spyridon's role in the defense of the island Venice legislated the establishment of the Litany Litania of St. Spyridon on of August as a commemoration of the miraculous event, inaugurating a tradition that continues to this day. In 1716 Antonio Vivaldi, on commission by the Republic of Venice, composed the Oratorio Judith Triumphans to commemorate this great event. Judith Triumphans was first performed in November 1716 in Venice by the orchestra and choir of the Ospedale della Pietà and is described as Vivaldi's first great oratorio. Hence Spyridon is a very popular first name for Greek males born on the island and or to islanders. Topic. Music and festivities The three city philharmonics Corfiote musical tradition is significant. In the past, people would join in the singing of cantades Greek, cantades or serenades, impromptu choral songs in two, three or four voices, usually accompanied by a guitar. Nowadays, in the face of rigors of a modern life from which Corfiote society has not been spared, cantades from the Italian verb cantare, to sing are only performed by semi-professional or amateur singers, often as attractions for visitors. Bands philharmonic societies, or philharmonicas, which also provide free instruction in music, are still popular and continue to attract young recruits. There are 19 such marching wind bands throughout the island. Corfu City is home to the three most prestigious bands, in order of seniority. The Philharmonic Society of Corfu use dark blue uniforms with dark red accents, and blue and red helmet plumes. It is usually called the Old Philharmonic or simply the Pallia. Old. Founded 12 September 1840. The Mantaros Philharmonic Society use blue uniforms with blue and white helmet plumes. It is commonly called the Nea. New. Founded 25 October 1890. The Capitistria Philharmonic Union use bright red and black uniforms and plumes. It is commonly called the Conte Capitistria or simply the Conte. Count. It is the juniormost of the three founded the 18th of April 1980. All three maintain two major bands each, the main marching bands that can field up to 200 musicians on grand occasions, and the 60-strong student bandinas meant for lighter fare and on-the-job training. The bands give regular summer weekend promenade concerts at the Spionata Green Palco, and have a prominent part in the yearly Holy Week ceremonies. A considerable but mostly friendly rivalry between them persists, and each rigorously adhere to their respective repertoires. Every time one of these bands passes in front of the building housing another, they stop and give a musical salute to their rival. While this is officially a sign of respect, it is actually a challenge meant to show off to the rivals and impress them with a display of superior musicianship. Topic. Easter On Good Friday, from the early afternoon onward, the bands of the three philharmonic societies, separated into squads, accompany the epitaph processions of the city churches. Late in the afternoon, the squads come together to form one band in order to accompany the epitaph procession of the cathedral, while the funeral marches that the bands play differ depending on the band. The Old Philharmonic play Albanoni's Adagio, the Mantaros play Verdi's Marcia Funebra from Don Carlo, and the Capodistria play Chopin's Funeral March and Mariani's Sventura. On Holy Saturday morning, the three city bands again take part in the epitaph processions of St. Spyridon Cathedral in procession with the saints' relics. At this point the bands play different funeral marches, with the Mantaros playing Michelli's called La Creme, the Pallia playing Marcia Funebra from Facio's Amleto, and the Capodistria playing the funeral march from Beethoven's Eroica. This custom dates from the 19th century, when colonial administrators banned the participation of the British Garrison Band in the traditional Holy Friday funeral cortege. The defiant Corfiotes held the litany the following morning, and paraded the relics of St. Spyridon too, so that the administrators would not dare intervene. The litany is followed by the celebration of the early resurrection. Balconies in the old city are decked in bright red cloth, and Corfiotes throw down large clay pots the batides, empotides full of water to smash on the street pavement, especially in wider areas of Liston and in an organized fashion. This is enacted in anticipation of the resurrection of Jesus, which is to be celebrated that same night, and to commemorate King David's phrase, Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Psalm chapter 2 verse 9. 
Once the Batides commotion is over, the three bands parade the clay-strewn streets playing the famous Grykoi festive march. This legendary march, the anthem of the island, was composed during Venetian rule, and its lyrics urged, Greeks, never fear, we are all enslaved, you to the Turks, we to the Venetians, but one day we shall all be free. The Venetians were replaced by the French and the French by the British, and both the lyrics and the performance of the march were officially banned. The bands, however, defiantly played it on the eve of Easter, as a token of the resurrection of the nation, and the tradition is honored to this day. Topic. Musical history While much of present-day Greece was under Ottoman rule, the Ionian Islands enjoyed a golden age in music and opera. Corfu was the capital city of a prized Venetian colony and it benefited from a unique musical and theatrical heritage. Then in the 19th century, as a British protectorate, Corfu developed a musical heritage of its own and which constitutes the nucleus of modern Greek musical history. Until the early 18th century, musical life took place in city and village squares, with performances of straight or musical comedies, known as momeries or bobberies. From 1720, Corfu became the possessor of the first theatre in post-1452 Greece. It was the Teatro San Giacomo now the city hall named after the nearby Roman Catholic Cathedral completed in 1691. The island was also the center of the so-called Ionian School of Music, the musical production of a group of Heptanesian composers, whose heyday was from the early 19th century till approximately the 1950s. It was the first school of classical music in Greece and it was a heavy influence for the later Greek music scene, after the independence. Topic. Teatro di San Giacomo Under Venetian rule, the Corfiotes developed a fervent appreciation of Italian opera, which was the real source of the extraordinary given conditions in the mainland of Greece musical development of the island during this era. The Opera House of Corfu during 18th and 19th century was the Nobile Teatro di San Giacomo, named after the neighboring Catholic cathedral, it was later converted into the city hall. It was both the first theater and first opera house of Greece in modern times and the place where the first Greek opera based on an exclusively Greek libretto, Spyridon Zindas the parliamentary candidate was performed. A long series of local composers, such as Nikolaos Mantaros, Spyridon Zindas, Antonio Liberali, Domenico Padovani, the Zakynthian Pavlos Karar, the Lamlet family, Spyridon Samaras, and others, all developed careers intertwined with the theater. San Giacomo's place was taken by the Municipal Theatre in 1902, which maintained the operatic tradition vividly until its destruction during German air raid in 1943. The first opera to be performed in the San Giacomo was in 1733, Girone, Tirano di Syracusa, and for almost 200 years, between 1771 and 1943, nearly every major opera from the Italian tradition, as well as many others from Greek and French composers, were performed on the stage of the San Giacomo. This tradition continues to be reflected in Corfiote operatic mythology, a fixture in famous opera singers' itineraries. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Municipal Theatre of Corfu. The Municipal Theatre of Corfu Greek, Dimotiko Teatro Kerkeras has been the main theatre and opera house in Corfu, Greece since 1902. The theatre was the successor of Nobile Teatro di San Giacomo di Corfu which became the Corfu City Hall. It was destroyed during a Luftwaffe aerial bombardment in 1943. <laughs> Ionian University and Musical Tradition Since the early 1990s a music department has been established at the Ionian University. Aside from its academic activities, concerts in Corfu and abroad, and musicological research in the field of Neo-Hellenic music, the department organizes an international music academy every summer, which gathers together both international students and professors specializing in brass, strings, singing, jazz and musicology. Another venerable Corfu tradition is known as the Carnival or Ta Carnivalia. Venetian in origin, festivities include a parade featuring the main attraction of Carnivalos, a rather grotesque figure with a large head and smiling face, leading a diverse procession of colorful floats. 
Corfiates, young and old, dress up in colorful costumes and follow the parade, spilling out into the area's narrow streets and spreading the festivities across the city, dancing and socializing. At night, in the island's more sophisticated social circles, dance and costume parties are traditional. Corfu in myth It is in Corfu that Hercules, just before embarking on his ten labors, slept with the naiad Melite, she bore him Hylas, the leader of the Heraclids. Corfu marks the Argonauts' refuge from the avenging Colchic fleet, after their seizure of the Golden Fleece. In the mythical sea adventure of Homer's Odyssey, Kirkura is the island of the Phaeacians, Phaeacis wherein Odysseus Ulysses meets Nausicaa, the daughter of King Alcinous. The Bay of Palaiokastritsa is considered to be the place where Odysseus disembarked. Topic. Corfu in literature British naturalist Gerald Durrell wrote three books about his 1935–1940 childhood on Corfu, My Family and Other Animals, Birds, Beasts and Relatives, and The Garden of the Gods. His brother, literary author Lawrence Durrell, also wrote a volume about Corfu, Prospero's Cell, A Guide to the Landscape and Manners of the Island of Corsaira Corfu. Mary Stewart's novel This Rough Magic is set in Corfu. Prospero's Island in Shakespeare's final play, The Tempest, is often said to have been based on Corfu. Humbert Humbert's first love, Annabel Lee, is said to have died of typhus in Corfu in a scene of Vladimir Nabokov's Lolita. Albert Cohen wrote three books which are partially or entirely set in Corfu. They are, Mangeclis, Les Valoureux, and Belle du Seigneur. Cohen himself was born on the island. Topic. Corfu in film Corfu was one of the main locations featured in the 1970 film The Executioner starring George Peppard and Joan Collins. Corfu was one of the settings of The Burglars, a 1971 film starring Jean-Paul Belmondo and Omar Sharif. Much of the 1978 Billy Wilder film Fedora is set in Corfu and filmed on location. The 1981 James Bond movie For Your Eyes only has a number of scenes filmed in Corfu. The most memorable scene of the film to be bound with the island is of the underwater ancient Greek temple, with a huge turtle swimming in front of the camera. A casino scene was also filmed at the Achillean. Other scenes filmed here include those tracing Molina and James's walk through the city's streets, and Molina being greeted by Bond at Pontaconisi Island. A major action element was filmed on the largest sandy beach on the island, Issos Beach in Agios Giorgio South, involving a beach buggy chase along the dunes. The film scene depicting a Greek wedding was filmed at the Buas Danielia traditional village Empuas Danielia Paradasiako. Action scenes were also filmed at Neo Froyurio. The 1984 Greek film, Ada Time Tes Agapes. The Price of Love, directed by Tanya Markataki is a tragic love story taking place in Corfu. It is based on the novel Honor and Money by Konstantinos Theotokos. Corfu is also the setting of a 1987 BBC TV series version, and a 2005 BBC movie version, of My Family and Other Animals, Gerald Durrell's book about his childhood in Corfu in the late 1930s. The Gaze of the Gorgon 1992, a poem film for BBC television by British poet Tony Harrison. The film examines the politics of conflict in the 20th century using the Gorgon as a metaphor. The imaginary narration of the film is done through the mouth of Jewish poet Heinrich Heine. The film describes the connection between the Corfu Gorgon at the Artemis Temple of Corfu and Kaiser Wilhelm II. Harrison concludes his 1992 film poem by making a proposal that in the 1994 European Union summit in Corfu, Heine's statue be returned to Corfu on time to preside over the new Europe so that EU can keep its eyes open and not turn to stone from the Gorgon's gaze. The Countess of Corfu Greek, Ada Komesa Tes a 1972 film starring Rina Vlahopolo and Alekos Alexandrakis, was filmed in Corfu. ITV aired a TV series, named The Durrells in Corfu, in April 2016 and a second season in 2017 with a third being filmed that year. It is a biographical series detailing Gerald Durrell's childhood on Corfu. Topic. Corfu in popular culture 
Corfu is one of the locations in the legend of Simon and Milo, where Simon falls in love temporarily. It is the setting of the 1998 song Mediterranean Lady by Prozac. The island is alluded to several times in David Foster Wallace's The Broom of the System. Drake mentions Corfu in a song. Tourism Corfiotes have a long history of hospitality to foreign residents and visitors, typified in the 20th century by Gerald Durrell's childhood reminiscence My Family and Other Animals. The North East Coast has largely been developed by a few British holiday companies, with large expensive holiday villas. Package holiday resorts exist on the North, East and Southwest coasts. At the other end of the island, the southern resort of Cavos also provides tourist facilities. St. George South to the west boasts the largest sandy beach on the island coupled with a selection of all-inclusive package hotels and traditional Corfiat villas and flats. The Carisian Lake Nature Reserve also provides a stop over for European birds migrating south. Up until the early 20th century, it was mainly visited by the European royals and elites, including Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany and Empress Elizabeth of Austria. Today it is also widely visited by middle-class families primarily from the UK, Scandinavia and Germany. With the advent of the jet airliner bringing these groups relatively affordable package holidays, Corfu was one of the primary destinations for this new form of mass tourism. It is still popular with the ultra-wealthy however, and in the island's northeast the homeowners include members of the Rothschild family and Russian oligarchs. Transport The island is linked by two motorways, GR24 in the northwest and GR25 in the south. Greek National Road 24, CEN, NW, Corfu, Palaiokastritsa, Greek National Road 25, CEN, S, SE, Corfu, Lefkima Corfu has ferry services both by traditional ferries to Gaios in the island of Paxoi and as far as Patras and both traditional ferries and advanced retractable airfoil, hydrodynamic flow, high-speed ferries called flying dolphins to Igamenitsa and Sarande in neighboring Albania. The small port of Lefkimi is also to be found at the southernmost tip of the island on Cape Cavos, offering a ferry service to the mainland. The Ioannis Kapodistrias International Airport, named after Ioannis Kapodistrias, a distinguished Corfiat and European diplomat, and the first governor of the independent Greek state, is located around 3 km south of Kerkara, just half a km north of Pontikonisi. The approach and landing, in a northeasterly direction, afford passengers spectacular aerial views of Pontikonisi and Vlaherina Monastery, also taking in the hills of Kanoni, as the runway employed for landing lies a few hundred meters from these spectacular local landmarks. The airport offers domestic flights from Olympic Airlines OA 600, 602 and 606, and Aegean Airlines A3-402, 404 and 406. Seaplanes, Air Sea Lines, a Greek seaplane operator, offers scheduled flights from Corfu to Paxoi, Lefkada, Ataki, Kefalonia, Yanina, Patras and Brindisi in Italy. The buses to the main places on the island run about six times a day between the city and Glyfada, Sidari, Paleokasritsa, Rhoda and Acharavi, Lefkimi, Lefkimi and Piri. Other coaches drive up to twice a day to Athens and Thessaloniki. City buses run through the city to the airport, Achillean, Guvia, AFRA, Palekas and some other places of interest. The Diapancha Islands are accessible by boat with regular services from Corfu Port and Agios Stephanos Avliotes and by ferry from Corfu City Port. Economy <inaudible> 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 Corfu is mostly planted with olive groves and vineyards and has been producing olive oil and wine since antiquity. The main wine grape varietals found in Corfu are the indigenous white cocotrigues and red petrocorido, the cephalonian white robola, the Aegean moschato, white muscat, the Achaean mavrodophni and others. Modern times have seen the introduction of specialist cultivation supported by the mild climate, like the kumquat and bergamot oranges, which are extensively used in making spoon sweets and liqueurs. Corfu also produces local animal products, such as Corfiote gravara a variant of Gruyere and Corfu cheese a variant of grana. Corfu butter. 
Butyro kurkuras, an intensely flavored cooking and baking butter made of ewe's milk, and the nambolo salami made of pork and lard and flavored with orange peel, oregano, thyme and other aromatic herbs, which are also burned for smoking. Local culinary specialties include sofrito, a veal rump roast of Venetian origin, pastizzata, bucatini pasta served with diced veal cooked in a tomato sauce, bordetto, cod cooked in a peppery sauce, mandols, caramelized almonds, pastelli, honey bars made with sesame, almonds or pistacchios, mandolato, a pastelli made of crushed almonds, sugar, honey and vanilla, and zitzabira, the local ginger beer, a remnant of the British era. There are three breweries in Corfu and one bed layers factory. The island has again become an important port of call and has a considerable trade in olive oil. In earlier times there was a great export of citron, which was cultivated here, including for ritual use in the Jewish community during the Sukkot holiday. <laughs> <laughs> International relations Mayen, Germany 1996. Troisdorf, Germany, 1996. Topic: Notable people. Topic: Ancient. Arsenius, 10th century, Saint. Pythias, leader during the Peloponnesian War. Philiscus, tragic poet, born in Corfu. Tolycus, 5th century BC, sculptor. Saint Philomena 291 to 304 AD virgin and martyr topic modern topic gallery topic see also Aspoti Elka cuisine of the Ionian Islands Heptanese school painting Hercules vehicles music of the heptanese topic notes topic references Lencini, Maria 2014 The Ionian Islands during the Byzantine period an overview of their history and monuments In Hearst Anthony Salmon Patrick the Ionian Islands, Aspects of Their History and Culture. Cambridge Scholars Publishing. pp. 26-63. ISBN 978-1-4438-6278-3. Saustel, Peter, Coder, Johannes Tabula Imperii Byzantini, Band 3, Nicopolis und Kephalinia in German. Vienna, Austria, Verlag der Österreichischen Akademie der Wissenschaften. ISBN 978-3-7001-0399-8 Topic. Further reading Corfu. A Handbook for Travelers in the Ionian Islands, Greece, Turkey, Asia Minor, and Constantinople, London, J. Murray, 1840, OCLC 397597. Corfu. Handbook for Travelers in Greece, 7th ed., London, John Murray, 1900. Corfu, Greece, 4th ed., Leipzig, Karl Baedeker, 1909. Corfu, The Encyclopædia Britannica, 11th ed., New York, Encyclopædia Britannica, 1910, OCLC 14,782,424. Siebert, Diana, Aller Herren Auenpassen. Corfu von 1797 bis 1944. Köln, 2016 ISBN 978-3-00-052502-5 External links Municipality of Corfu official site. Serbs in Corfu and Vito, historical website